What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video today, we're going to cover how to actually boost your metabolism. And I say actually because I'm sure you have come across some ad or some article or something where, you know, this guarantees to boost your metabolism and burn fat. This will guarantee your, your metabolism to boost and burn fat. And in this video, I'm going to cover exactly how you can boost your metabolism and not only how to boost your metabolism, but first and foremost, we're going to jump in. What is your metabolism? Because I, I see and hear so many people talk about, oh, my metabolism is slow, it's slowed down, I get older, my metabolism slows down, you know, as I age, whatever it is. And I ask them, well, do you know what your metabolism actually is? And 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they can't give me a real answer. And if they do, it's something along the lines of, oh, well, it burns calories and, you know, it burns my fat. Simply put, what is your metabolism? Your metabolism is the sum of all chemical processes going on at any moment inside of your body. So for example, you watching this video right now is a part of your metabolism. You doing your reproductive hormonal process, that's part of your metabolism. You sleeping at night, you talking, all these things are a part of your metabolism. It is the sum of all and any chemical processes going on inside your body at once. And there's so much going on inside your body at once you can only imagine. So what is metabolism? That is the very basic concrete uh, ground part of what is your metabolism. So now you'll understand a bit more that it's not just concerned with you burning calories for fat. Like your metabolism, it keeps you alive. It keeps your hormones running. It keeps your reproductive system going. There's a lot more your metabolism does than try to get you a flat stomach and, and you know, toned arms. So that is what is your metabolism. Now let's dive into a few things here. Um, first and foremost is going to be BMR. And what this stands for is basal metabolic rate. And what this means is this is basically how many calories your body burns at rest, doing nothing. So if you laid in bed all day long, you didn't even blink, this is how many calories your body would burn at rest. And you have to realize, most people ask me, oh, well, how, how do I know how many calories I'm burning? And 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they're asking about their calories burned through exercise. First and foremost, not only are those fitness trackers anywhere from 23 to 97% inaccurate when it comes to how many calories you burn. So for example, let's call it 50%. If it says you burn 500 calories on your Apple Watch or your Fitbit, you really only burn like 250. There's plenty of studies out there to prove this. But beyond that fact, how do you know how many calories your body burns? That would be your BMR. And again, that's if you did nothing else. That's if you didn't move your arm like this. That's if you didn't get out of bed, if you didn't blink your eyes. That's how many calories your body would burn at rest. So when talking about how to boost your metabolism, this right here is going to be a big part of what your metabolism is. Again, it's not just, oh, I can't lose my belly fat, so I must have a slow metabolism. There's a lot more that goes into your metabolism. And again, BMR is basically the sum of all these metabolic processes without anything added in. Again, if you just laid in bed all day, that's how many calories you would burn. There's tons of ways to figure this out. There's calculators online. If you Google, you know, find my BMR, all these kind of things, there's a few different equations you can do. So beyond that, I want to talk about what goes in to your BMR. So first and foremost, it's going to be lean body mass. And what this is, is it's basically the mass on your body that is not fat. Okay, so this includes muscle, this includes bones, this includes organs, this includes water weight. All the stuff on your body that is not fat, that goes into your lean body mass. Why is this important? The higher your lean body mass is, you know, the, the higher your muscle mass, and basically in terms of what this does for you and your metabolism, how you can, and we're going to talk about this in the next section, but how you can kind of take this is the more lean muscle mass, the higher your BMR. Remember that because we're going to talk about that later. All right, so lean body mass is something that directly impacts your BMR, okay? So again, aside from all the hormonal processes and all that kind of stuff, having a higher lean body mass is going to lead to you having a higher BMR, which is going to lead to you higher, having a higher metabolism. Now, what goes into your lean body mass? Obviously, I just told you muscle mass goes into your lean body mass, right? Bones, uh, organs, all these kind of things. This is why I want to talk about gender right here next, because... Oftentimes, people think that it's easier for guys to lose weight or, or, or guys can eat more and, and not gain weight. And you know what? In some sense, that is true. But I want to give you some context on why that is true. Going back to what we know about metabolism, it's your BMR and your lean body mass. So a guy like myself, we normally tend to be taller. Okay, So if you're taller, you have more bone density, 
you have bigger bones. You normally have more muscle if you're a guy, not always, but you normally have more muscle if you're a male. All this stuff comes into play when going into your BMR, right? Because if you have more muscle mass, if you have more lean body mass, again, more, more, more bone density, you know, bigger bones, all these kind of things, that goes into having a higher BMR, which goes into having a higher metabolism because you have, again, guys normally tend to be on the taller side. They normally tend to be, have more muscle mass than women. That's why their metabolism may be higher and that's why they may be able to burn calories at a faster rate. They may be able to eat more without gaining weight. That's why, because just naturally, sorry ladies, just naturally, men typically tend to have higher metabolisms because they have a higher BMR, because they have more bone density and more muscle mass. And I want you to understand that because it's not just like, I want you to understand the reasoning behind why men may have a higher metabolism. It's not just because like it's unfair. It just is what it is. That's why, right? So on top of that, let's talk about age now, okay? So when talking about age, this is one where... <laughs> I hear this nonstop all day, you, you, your metabolism slows down when you age and that's why you can't lose weight anymore. Is this true? Yes, your metabolism does slow down as you age. Is it anywhere near the amount you think it does? No, not at all. Your, your metabolism does, simply just does not slow down that much as you age. And if it does, it's more because you are making lifestyle changes than as opposed to just your metabolism slowing down because you age. Let's talk about it. So as you age, let's say you're, you were you know, skinny and fit at 21 and now you're 47 and you're more overweight. What else changed in your life? Maybe say at 21 you were always running around because you were a, a, a waiter or a waitress. Or maybe at 21 you didn't have a lot of food and you were in college so you were eating ramen every single night because you couldn't afford nothing else. So you couldn't really have a lot of food. Let's say you were playing sports in high school or whatever it is. 9.9 .9 times out of 10... As you age, your lifestyle changes. Let's say you go from, again, having a more active job at 21 to now you're 47 and you have a desk job and you sit at a desk nine, nine to five, Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends you go through, you know, you had your, your kids have games and you had to travel places. So you can't really be as active as you were at, at age 21. That would be more of the reason why your metabolism is slowing down, not just because it slows down as you age. Let's go to, again, let's go to food now. I kind of already said it, but Let's say, you know, at 24, you were living on your own, you were cooking your own meals, you were, you know, you had time to cook, you had time to do these things, but now you're 47, you're married, your spouse likes to eat, you are traveling more, you don't have as much time to cook your food, you don't have as much time to plan your food out, you're more eating on the go, that would be why you're gaining weight as opposed to just your metabolism slowing down. So remember, all of these things normally tend to lead back towards your BMR, but I wanted to hit on the age and the gender because just because you're a woman or just because you get older does not mean you cannot lose weight faster or, or a male either way, but that does not mean you cannot lose, still lose weight just because you got older or just because, you know, men burn calories faster than women. That's not the case. I want you to understand that. So moving forward, you know, the power is in your hands. You are the one in control. So just making sure you know that. And then one last point there very quickly, lean body mass. As you age, your lean body mass tends to go down. Why is this? Because as you age, you, you tend to normally lose muscle mass. And if you go back to the, what we talked about here with the lean body mass and the BMR, you tend to normally lose body mass. I mean, I'm sorry, you lose muscle mass and you lose bone density. If you lose muscle mass and lose bone density, those two things play into your lean body mass and your BMR, which is leading into your metabolism. So those two things decrease, which means your metabolism slows down. But how can you counteract this? This is why doing a structured strength training program, especially it gets, it's always important, but as you age, it gets more important because if you can keep and retain or even build some lean muscle mass and you can keep and build bone density, that is going to keep your lean body mass higher, which is going to keep your BMR higher, which is going to keep your metabolism higher, all because you're following a structured strength training program. If you want some information on how to create your own structured strength training program, I'm going to put a link up here where my finger is. I, I just did a video on how to create your own structured workout program. Feel free to hit the link here, learn some more there. And if you have a question, do not hesitate to reach out to me, all right? But that's also what I want to say on age as far as metabolism. So that basically covers how your metabolism works. And I'm now going to kind of shift into 
how to boost your metabolism slash how your body actually burns calories. And, and this is something that people are, I kind of touched on it over here, but people are confused about, they think they have to burn X amount of calories through exercise to boost their metabolism. That could not be farther from the truth. I'm going to dive into it right now. Okay. So how does your body actually burn calories? There's some, you know, acronyms here and, and there's some words that may not make sense. I'm going to go over them. How your body burns calories in a day. Let's go over it. 70% of your body's calories that you burn during a day comes from your BMR. And if you remember back here, BMR is mainly your lean body mass going into your BMR. It's, it's your, again, it's how your body burns calories just at rest. So again, if you just did nothing all day long, that is 70% of how your body burns calories for that given day. You can see that is a lot of percentage there. That is more than the majority of how your body burns calories in a, in a, in a day. So we're going to get into that more and more as we kind of go. But again, 70% is how many calories your body burns in a day. 70% comes from your BMR. The next one, 10% comes from NEAT. And what, the, what NEAT is, it's just a fancy word for, fancy acronym, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And what does that mean? It just means the things you do moving around that are not exercise. So if I were to get up and walk to my fridge back there and come back, that would be neat. If I were to go down and walk to my car, that would be neat. If I went on a 15 minute walk, that would be neat. Me moving my arm like this is neat. Me fixing my pen is neat. All the things that are, and I know some people are gonna ask, well, you know, isn't, isn't cardio walking, which is exercise. The way I deem exercise is you are exercising for a certain goal, whether it is to, you know, get 15,000 steps, whether it is to, you know, work out and build muscle, whether it's to deadlift or whatever it is, it's, it's working towards a certain goal. Whereas neat is walking to the grocery store, just getting steps in throughout the day, you know, parking farther away from the grocery store, taking the stairs at work instead of taking the elevator. That would be things like neat. And again, just like moving your hand around that one skinny kid in high school that was always fidgeting and it was always moving. He had a really, really high neat or she, he or she had a really, really high neat. So they just moved us all the time. That was burning more calories because they just moved all the time. That's, that's what neat is. So that is 10% of what your body burns in a given day for as far as calories, right? The next one is TEF. And this stands for the thermic effect of food. And what does that mean? When, so 10% of your body's daily calorie burn comes from you basically digesting food, di consuming and digesting food. That's where 10% of your calorie burn for the day comes from. How can you optimize your TEF to burn more calories and boost your metabolism? Protein, 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 protein. Protein has the highest thermic effect of food of any macronutrient. And macronutrients are just protein, carbs, and fats. So protein has the highest thermic effect of food. So when, you're, when you eat protein, your body has to work harder and burn more calories to digest that protein. That's why when you go on a quote unquote diet or when you're trying to lose weight, going on a high protein diet and, and having you know anywhere from 0.7 to one times your body weight in pounds of protein is a good place to be because you're gonna get a high protein amount and that's gonna optimize your TEF because again, that's 10% of how your body burns calories through the day. So if you're having 40 grams of protein as opposed to 150 grams of protein, your th this person's body that's eating 150 grams of protein has to burn more calories throughout the day to just digest the food. You don't have to go actually, you don't have to do anything, just eat more protein and that person's body is going, to die, is going to burn more calories digesting that food. So that's why you can optimize your TEF and, and again, optimize your calorie burn for that day and, and you know, for your journey by eating higher protein. All right, so that's 10%. And then finally comes exercise. That is also 10% of how your body burns calories throughout the day. I mentioned earlier, and again, I'm gonna link a Stanford article here below. Whatever your Fitbit or the watch or the treadmill or your phone says you burn for calories, is inaccurate and probably it's very very inaccurate it is so incredibly hard to measure the co2 coming out of your body a, a watch on your arm is not going to measure the co2 coming out of your body a watch on your arm does not know the amount of muscle mass you have for example if 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 i have more muscle mass than you or if you have more muscle mass than me we are going to burn different calorie amounts for that time because again if you have more muscle mass you automatically burn more calories. So if you only have 100, 100 pounds of lean body mass, but I have 150 pounds of lean body mass, we could work out for the same number of time on our watches and have the same calorie burn number, 
but we don't because I would have burned more calories and you would have burned less calories because, simply because you just have a, lean, a different lean body mass. But again, a watch does not take that into example. And then talk, going further, exercise, it, it's hard to tell. Again, if, if I've been running for 15 years and you've been running for two years, your body is not as used to running as much as mine is. So if I'm going to go run five miles and you're going to go run five miles, Again, it can give you the same calorie burn on your watch, but my my body has less work to do because I'm more used to that. That's 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 something I'm used to. Whereas you, if you only run once a week and I run five times a week for 15 years and two years, I'm going to burn less calories just because my body's used to it more. Your body has to exert more energy, more calories to get through that than I would. So again, it's very hard to tell how many calories your body burns. This is why, again... I'm a fan of, and this is going to get into our our next point actually, I'm a fan of making your exercise based around building muscle and increasing your lean body mass and increasing your bone density. Why is this? Let's, Let's get into some practical tips now. Ways to boost your metabolism. The first way I'm going to say is make your exercise about building muscle and building strength and building bone density. How do you do that? Again, you follow a structured strength training program. Because if we if we look back, if you make 10% of your exercise, that's that's how many calories your body burns, 10% of exercise in a day. If you make this to help that BMR, because if you are doing strength training, you are building lean muscle mass, which is helping your which is I'm sorry, you're building muscle mass, which is helping your lean body mass, which is helping your BMR, which is 70% of how your body burns calories. So why not use that exercise time to boost your BMR because it's 70% of how your body burns calories in a day. So take that exercise time, build some muscle, build some bone density, keep your BMR high, and you will burn more calories. That's how you automatically boost your metabolism, not by going and doing hours of cardio. That, that doesn't have a much of an effect on lean body mass or BMR. Spend that time doing exercise to build muscle, build strength, build bone density. I'm not saying don't do cardio because Again, I, I, I'm a big fan of, my cardio is a big fan of doing neat. So that's just increasing steps. So again, like parking farther away or going for a 30 minute walk to get your steps in, like that's a great thing to do. I'm not saying don't do cardio. Cardio is great for your heart health. It's great for a bunch of things. But as far as exercising, you can increase your, you can boost your metabolism by building muscle, building bone density and increasing your BMR, which again is the majority of how your body burns calories throughout the day. The next thing I'm going to say is we kind of already touched on it. Make sure you eat a high protein diet. Again, I would take your body weight times 0.7 to 1, anywhere between there. So if you do body weight times 0.8, body weight times 1, again, this is in pounds, that's how many grams of protein you should be eating throughout the day. This is going to maximize this TEF right here. And you will automatically burn more calories and boost your metabolism from simply eating protein. So if you can just eat higher protein, that's going to help your metabolism boost and it's going to burn more calories. You'll lose more weight, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, and only that, not, not only that, protein is the only macronutrient, not only, but it's the most satisfying macronutrient. So you're going to be full. What does this mean? You're going to eat less because you're more full. If you eat less and boost your metabolism from boosting your TEF, you're going to be in a calorie deficit and burning more calories. So in the end, you're going to lose weight. You're going to tone your body. You're going to build muscle all because you're having high protein. Okay. And one last note, I just talked talked about building muscle. You can eat high protein, which is the only nutrient that helps you build and retain lean body mass. And again, especially as you age, this gets more important because if you can eat protein, you're not only boosting your TEF, you're also boosting your lean body mass because you are keeping and retaining muscle mass. So you're boosting your BMR once again from high, from having high protein. So it can help your digestion, burn more calories. It can also keep and retain your lean muscle mass, which is going to help your BMR long term. Okay, again, which is going to increase your metabolism. So uh, last thing there, neat. Just simply getting steps in. I, I like the goal of having eight to twelve thousand steps a day. That is, I, I give every single one of my online coaching clients that that goal to have, just because I think it's just great. Again, just being healthy. I'm, I'm never never saying cardio is bad and don't do it, but. If you can just simply, if, if you make your cardio getting eight to 12,000 steps a day, you are, you are leagues ahead of everybody else. And again, that's just only going to increase your need and increase your metabolism and boost your metabolism that much more. Okay. So guys, that's basically how to increase your metabolism. That's what your metabolism is. That's how to increase it. If you have a question, if you have a concern, if you, if you want to ask me about something, feel free to uh, shoot me a message, shoot me a comment down here below. 
shoot me an email, uh, do whatever you have to do. I, I would love to hear from you, but uh, I, I thoroughly hope you enjoyed. The very, very last thing I want to cover is supplements. I left it for last because none of those work. <laughs> Please do not buy fat burning supplements. Do not buy fat burners. Do not buy metabolism boosters. They do not fucking work. The next time somebody buys a fat burner and asks me my opinion on it, I'm going to jump off my balcony. They do not work. Please stop buying them. Use that time. Use that effort. Use that money to go buy you know, higher protein food or, or get a gym membership, whatever it is. Those things do not work. So please stop buying them. They don't work. And on that note, that's how I'm going to end the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave me a comment below letting me know, and uh, we will look to talk soon. Thank you.